nothing is as bad as it seems. You know, so nothing is as bad as it seems. It never is. Even though in your head and what you think is the ultimate fire that you will never get over, it isn't as bad as it seems, you know, and everything works out all of the time, you know. So that's something that I believe strongly. Even now when just everything is falling apart, I'm just like, you know what, it's not as bad as it seems, you know. It's only window cleaning. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not the end of the world. How are you? Welcome to the Entrepreneur Experiment Podcast with me, Gary Fox. Today, my guest is Luke Joyce, the founder of The Cleaning Company. He's building a multi-million euro business from washing your windows. Here's my chat with Luke. Luke, welcome to the pod. Thanks for having me. We've had a pod within a pod already. <laughs> yeah. Discovered Should all our likes and dislikes. Like, yeah. Yeah. Then now, um, we just had Nadia from Ashford Motors in and she we we actually kind of were talking about that at the end. It was like, do you ever watch the Overlap podcast or Stick to Football with Gary Neville? No, I've seen clips of it, but I yeah. haven't ever seen so it. So basically what they do is they start recording the minute they walk in. Right. So Gary will generally walk in first and he'll be sitting down and he'll get his mic on, but they're recording everything. That's a great idea. Yeah. And N- now there's six of them or five of them so they'll be coming in and it's in like this like s- the set is like a bar or a restaurant and they're all sitting around this big table and like just cups of tea coming out and croissants yeah, yeah. and cake and they're chatting away and and like this this week's one like they were chatting for like half an hour and i was glued to it and they're already they actually got going like, yeah. yeah and and gary's like right we'll start the podcast and they're like we've done a half an hour gary you're not making us work another hour and they were like having the crack but like it's it's like you feel like you're in this kind of like in the room with them. Yeah. You feel like because I've grown up watching them and you kind of feel like you're just sitting there having the chat. Is that the one that Roy Keane has yeah. been? Yeah, I've seen a few clips. It's very good. Oh, yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. We should have done that outside. <laughs> but you know what? That's a sneak preview. I yeah, think that's yeah. what I'll do from next season because me and Ben are always brainstorming about right, how do we make it better and change? I think that could be it. Yeah. It's like we just come in get the and whole just start chatting thing. and just then we get going. No, it won't work with everyone because everyone's different, right? Some mm. people are kind of like on edge or whatever. And um, that's why I kind of have the coffee and stuff for people to kind of make it kind of a bit more natural because it's a weird one, right? Yeah. We're sitting here. It's camera there, camera there, big lights. <laughs> you know, it's a strange setup. <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm uh, looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to the last few weeks. Class. Um, it's great so, to be on. Yeah. No, thanks a million. Um, You've been blessed by the queen of entrepreneurship, Anya Kennedy. <laughs> yeah. She <laughs> reached down from above. Honored reached down me, from yeah. Vogue and was like, you were, you were the <laughs> chosen Vogue. one, Luke. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe she uh, had met, because I didn't hear that podcast. I seen the clip, sorry, but I didn't listen to it. I should have, but I didn't. But, um, no, I meant to say that. Luke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. Um, no, I've listened to it since, but uh, <laughs> I um, then I listened to it properly and I heard that bit at the end where she mentioned me. as the, What was it? It was a, if it a million euro. million euro. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh, geez, that's mad. Um, so then when she reached Did out, you get it? The million euro? Yeah. No, I'm still waiting on it. Okay, on you. Yeah, I think Putting she's her spot. new HQ coming up or something. So maybe she's... Uh, she's blown it on that, yeah. I think. Yeah. Blown <laughs> yeah. on a new fancy office. The smooth... Uh, she was actually talking about the HQ on your podcast that she wanted to get something like that. And I yeah. think she's very close to doing that now. Yeah, she was teasing it on social yesterday. Big things coming. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. like, ah, oh, come on. <laughs> I think it's been announced soon. She's class. Oh, yeah. she's brilliant. She's yeah. amazing. Like her growth trajectory is just class. And she's the one you can look at and go, yeah. Yeah. Because she's sound, an absolute grafter, super creative, and, and just knows which one is to do, mm. but is doing it in a very organic, natural way. Too many people like try to be organic and try to be like, oh, look. Yeah. Whereas she's genuinely the real deal. Yeah. Uh, Anya's a legend. Like I went to college with Anya in entrepreneurship in Minute. And she, she said, always... I said to her this morning, I was like, what should I ask Luke? And she goes, ask him who his favorite college friend was and if he doesn't say me edit it out yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh no we got on well in college because she's just like the good thing about or the thing i love about on is that what you see online is her do you know what i mean there's no uh there's no difference at all she doesn't put on any sort of persona or talk in a different way nothing yeah, um, and i know so many people that i know personally and i'm looking at them online i'm like that's not you <laughs> like it happens to me on this you yeah. get people on you're like oh, that's all there is. Yeah. There's nothing else. Yeah. There's this character. And then when you're out of character, you're absolutely no crack. Yeah. Whereas Anya is just as authentic online as she is off, you know? So that's why I think she's she's great. And uh, they're doing some serious, serious stuff. Like She'll go all the way. Yeah. It's, it's massive. Like, and the people, like I'm not in tune with beauty products or the beauty industry at all, but 
You definitely used a smooth stick on that beard. Yeah, or the, beard the dapper stick. Right there. Yeah, the dapper <laughs> stick. Uh, that's for these brows. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the the celebrities that are using the product and stuff, it's brilliant. Like it's wow. dead. It's just such a cool the brand and everything. Yeah, I think it's it's going to be. It already is huge, but, but I think, it's one yeah. of those things you kind of go. It's part art, part science. You're like, it has all the core ingredients, but then it has that little extra. Yeah, that, the branding is brilliant. <sighs> I think that's probably was big in college we were doing branding and all that sort of stuff and she was always interested in that as was I that was the cool part do you know what I mean the fun kind of part of it obviously just the whole slog that goes on in the background but that's the the finished product is cool like so and the name and everything just works yeah it's funny isn't it like it just works yeah and it's it's those intangible 20 percent that settles the good businesses from the great businesses yeah it's that intangible it's like when you go somewhere really nice and you're like this just feels good. Yeah. You can't probably say what it is because there's probably loads of things. It's probably the service. It's probably the decor. It's probably like the way it's lit and the music and the smell. Yeah. It's probably loads of things. It's like that with business. So she did the smooth stick and you did? The cleaning company. So she's the Very smooth similar. Company. Yeah. We're just cleaning company. Okay. Really I see your that. branding lecture was very creative. <laughs> yeah. I see. Get company in there. Like, yeah. The and company. <laughs> so yeah, we're the cleaning company. <laughs> She's the smooth company. So we've uh, loads in common. <laughs> um, so talk to me about that. How did you set up that? Because I was excited yeah. about you coming in because I like real businesses. Mm. I think people will find that a weird thing to say, but like there's a big trend towards like sweaty startups, just real businesses. Yeah. People doing things who like, you know, buy it for X, sell it for Y. You know, do a service for X, sell for Y. Real yeah. stuff that people get. So what do you do? Yeah, it's as simple as it gets. It's it's window cleaning on a on a regular basis. So it's obviously we do a whole lot of other stuff, gutters, all that sort of thing, and power washing. But our our bread and butter is is a subscription based window cleaning company. So it's and just kind of picking up on something you said there about you know people always have to have this. And you, know, you said outside as well, if they have the next big tech thing and all that sort. Of, and it was the same in college and. Any group assignment you were given, it would always be, oh, let's do a just the app, but make it better. <sighs> you know, or when someone be the says to me, Netflix and it's going to be an app, I'm like, oh, yeah, just kill me. Like, so me. there was all that stuff. And every group project got into it, you would be doing another app because, and it was an app to tell you how many seats were taken in the library in college. And I'm just like, that won't work. So then I was just like, I'm going to do window cleaning because it was just simple, it was easy. I kept hearing there was a lack of reliable window cleaners. And I remember the time I was like, how is there a lack? Like it's, it couldn't be any easier as a kind of service to learn and stuff. So that's kind of what sparked it. And then I suppose during college, I was working on it. And the more I worked on it and the more I looked into the industry, the more I thought this is, there's something here, you know? So I kind of used. How did you stumble across it? Because I think exactly what you said there, a lot of people would be like, oh, I'm going to do an app and da, 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 I hear all this terrible advice. Oh, don't do things that don't scale. Don't do this. Don't do that. And people are like avoiding all the real businesses that mm-hmm. have been around for like decades. Yeah. And that are profitable and that are easy. People are always going for the hard route. Yeah. Like Munger and Buffett talk about like the hard pile and the easy pile. If it's in the hard pile, they just don't touch it. If it's in the easy pile, they'll then explore it. So how did you start exploring the, that area? Going green, becoming more sustainable. It's everywhere, right? Everyone wants to be greener and do their bit to help. But sometimes, for your business, there are more important things to do. It's hard to find the time. Well, take it out of your hands because it's all in a day's work for your local enterprise office. They have the time and the experts to sort it for you. And the best bit is, it'll help your business, save you time, money, and energy. Perfect, right? The Green for Business Audit will assess your business and tell you where you can make changes. And the new Energy Efficiency Grant will help you pay for those changes. And your local enterprise office will sort the whole process for you. Go to www.allinadayswork.ie forward slash green, fill out the form that takes less than two minutes, and your local enterprise office will take from there. Going green? It's all in a day's work for your local enterprise office. Before we dive into today's episode, I want to share a game changer for your business, Azure Communications. When it comes to print and marketing solutions, these folks, led by CEO Jenny Johnston, are the real deal. Whether you need an eye-catching brochure, sleek business cards, or a full-blown digital campaign, Azure Communications has you covered. They're not just about high-quality prints or digital campaigns, they're also about delivering great results. And here's the best part. Just for listeners of the Entrepreneur Experiment, you can get 20% off your first order. Just give them a call or go online and use the code FOX20. With personalized service and fast turnaround times, 
Azure Communications will help you make the impact your business deserves. Trust me, when it comes to making your brand stand out, Azure Communications is the provider of choice. Check them out at azurecom.ie, use code FOX20 and elevate your marketing game today. Many of you listening to the pod are business owners and savvy investors, but have you been introduced to -to peer-to-peer lending? Peer-to-peer lending is the practice of lending money directly to other individuals or businesses without the need for a traditional intermediary like a bank. Property Bridges offers you the opportunity to lend directly to experienced home builders across Ireland through their innovative online investment platform. Investors earn returns of up to 9% per annum and your money is fully secured against property. To learn more, visit propertybridges.com. Property Bridges is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Yeah, so I suppose I was, I was looking for something to do part-time. Like I got a job in a pharmaceutical company in a warehouse when I was about 17 and I lasted, I think, a month. Was hey, Sounds yeah. exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just... <laughs> It, it was the worst job of all time. For me, it was just... You uh, need that, though. You yeah. Need, you need shit That jobs. knocked the bollocks out of me. I was like, I never, ever want to do anything like that again. Like, it was just, like, picking up and dropping. That was all you're doing is moving, like, boxes of pills around for a robot. hours. Yeah. A robot. And they had robots, but we were doing this for some reason. So. Slightly smarter robot. Yeah. Or slightly dumber. I don't know which. Yeah. They had us, yeah. So... What, what will the robots refuse to do? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're on strikes and they're us in. <laughs> so it lasts like a month. That's the only job I ever had. You know, that sort of, I, I call it just, you said, a normal job. It's worth it though, like because yeah. you have to know what you don't want. Yeah, and that's what my dad said at the time. He was like, well, at least you know now what you don't want to do, 100%. you know. So um, then I just thought I need to earn a bit of extra cash somehow because I was in college at the time. So I kind of thought window cleaning. Again, it was just coming from, I'd heard it a few times, there was no window cleaners. And my mom at the time was looking for a window cleaner in Raccoon and couldn't get one. And she'd got two guys and they arrived late. Uh, if they arrived at all, there was this big clunky process. And whatever just went off my head, I was like, why is that so hard to do? So broken. And I remember Googling for my mom, window cleaners, Dublin. And all the websites back then were like, Ancient, like the original kind of web 1.0 yeah, type websites. There still are a lot yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's like you'd click on a button and nothing would happen. And it's just like this placeholder website. And I was like, this is mad. Like, or you call and it's like, hello? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, Who's is, this? That's yeah, sort of like, I'm sorry to disturb you. And he's supposed to come around to clean your windows. Like. <laughs> I know. So it was all this going on. I remember just thinking, that's wild. Like, so I was like, I'll just start doing it. So I cleaned my mom's windows. And I, like I went out bought, it was kind of 50 euro worth of equipment. So it was a bucket a squeegee from Pat and Nolene out of a house in Tala. They were sold equipment. They're still there. <laughs> Pat and uh, Nolene. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, so they sold out of Tower Enterprise. They're still there in, in Alban. They sell equipment from their garage. So I bought like 50 euro worth of equipment, borrowed a ladder and just went out. Love that. Watched a load of YouTube videos. Went out later that day and did. <laughs> went out later that day and did cleans for friends of mine. Class. An absolute bollocks of it. And then kind of learned how to do it properly. So I'm addicted. My secret addiction is watching YouTube of like gardeners. Yeah. It's very cleaners, satisfying. Builders. I just love watching it. Yeah. Just watching them to do it. Like I burst my eardrum in May. So I, was, I literally had to stay on the couch for like two days. And all I watched was that. Yeah. I it's watched, satisfying. Like, like it's nice work. People doing gardenings. Like, I reckon I could have a crack at our patio. By the end of the second day, I was redesigning the patio. Going, I reckon I could lay that. Yeah. You know, I've watched about five hours of YouTube. I reckon yeah. I could be laying patio now. Yeah, so that was me. I just watched a load of videos on uh, on YouTube of how to clean windows and just went out at it. And I suppose at the same time, I was in college and I was, uh, again, I was looking at all these websites and all the different companies that were there. And I think the max I could find of another window cleaning company was kind of two vans, you know, or three vans. And if they had three vans, they were huge. Yeah. Um, and I remember thinking, like, how is there not loads? Like, I was looking at, like, like pest control companies, like Rent-A-Kill, mm. um, drain cleaning companies like Dino Rod or all them sort of ones. And there was all these different industries had big companies and big stuff and big trucks. And there was nothing like that for window cleaning. Why? I have absolutely no idea. It was just no one. It's like no one had picked up on it. It was so fragmented. It was like mm. one man and his van and you'd never grow any more than that. Um, and I say window cleaning companies, like there's obviously big facilities management companies like Noonan's. Yeah, and, it's you know, different though. And right? they happen yeah. to they do everything. clean windows. Yeah, 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 I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about window gutter cleaning, cleaning companies. Um, I have no idea why. I, I don't know. It was just weird. So I just picked up on that and I just thought there's something to be, you know, had here. So it kind of worked in college on 
the group assignments that were apps, I was then making everyone work on my uh, window cleaning project. So for like, we Brilliant. did like a thesis for the final year and we did uh, we did a window cleaning company and the lads still said to me, slagging me, there was four of us. And they were like, we gave you that idea because like, you know, they were helping me with putting it all together. Like, But that's the way to do it. Like yeah. I always say to people, I do some work with students and I always say to them like, try work on something you care about. Yeah. Don't just do a fucking project just for the sake of doing it. Sometimes you have to, right? But I was like, and I always start, it takes ages, but I always start the class and go around and go, right, what, what, are, what are you, what are you doing? What are you into? Mm. You working on an idea or are you just, just studying for the crack of studying? Yeah. And the difference between people who care and actually want to pursue an idea. I was like, you have a year now, journey of course or a year, nine months, whatever. Um, a lot gets done in a year if you use this time mm. to focus your efforts. And I was like, you probably will change it three, four times over the course of the year. And that's okay. But if you start now, you'll be so much far ahead mm. of you. Like you have so much resources when you're in college. Yeah, Students definitely, it's not their fault. I think they need to be challenged better to go, look, you have everything behind you. You have all these resources of a massive company, essentially, mm. which is the college. And you've like, you've protection. Yeah. Anyone will talk to a student. Yeah. I keep saying this to people, like, go out and talk to people. That's very, very true. Go out and talk to businesses. Yeah. They don't feel you, you're a threat at all. No, yeah. they'll tell you everything. Mm. Um, the good ones will. And like, everyone will talk to a student because everyone's either been there or their son is there or their daughter is there, whatever. Yeah. Like, it's an incredible time to start a business. Yeah, for sure. And that's that's very true is that you'll, like, if I was to ring up a company now and say, hey, we can have a meeting, I want to ask you about all your secrets. Yeah, you know what's what your process? Off, like, yeah. yeah. Whereas back then, I was like one of our lecturers was on the board of directors for a, a huge um, facilities management company. And he picked up on our idea. He was like, this is great. I'll put you in touch mm. with uh, the managing director of this company. Went and met with him and had a hundred questions. He answered absolutely every one of them. If I went there now, he'd be telling me nothing. Well, like, you'd so. learn more in that hour than you will in a year of oh, studying books online, yeah. studying, looking at stuff. You'll learn more from one yeah. to one in an hour than you will in And the anything stuff he books. said to me, I still base things off like yeah. he kind of certain things he said to me was like it was he had big tenders for like dublin city council would give them the tender for certain things and he told me stuff on you know how to keep that relationship going and making sure you're doing because they're all five-year contracts and stuff like that and we're i'm literally doing that now and that was like i'm 27 now would have been what are you 18 19 so nearly 10 years ago like yeah. um and i'm only now it's coming into as like he said that yeah. to me ten years ago. Do you know what I mean? It's mad how it stuff works. is timeless. Good yeah. advice is timeless. One hundred percent. And he's and in like, the game years exactly. Like, so, yeah, like he has seen it all. And like sometimes you can reinvent the wheel. Yeah, entrepreneurs always try to reinvent the wheel. Oh, I'm gonna do it totally <laughs> differently. And you have to add a bit of secret sauce. You've done it with the subscription, which I think is genius. Yeah, but too often try to reinvent the wheel. Mm. Try to create an app for window cleaning, and then I'm gonna source window cleaners, and I'm gonna do, you're like. Maybe you've just started doing the windows yourself. Yeah. Like too often it's overthought. Yeah, for just sure. Try cram square peg round hole. So you started working on it in college, started doing it yourself kind of like part time. Mm. How did you grow it then? Um, so plan was always to, once I finished college, go hard at it, you know, go kind of full time at it. Um, I then had an injury in, would have been 2018. I was in a bad car accident and my back kind of, one of the vertebrae went over on the other and I'd surgery my back and my shoulder and stuff. So that put me like wow. kind of out of that work. Yeah. yeah. So it was, that was a kind of really, I didn't know what was happening because I graduated then. And so the injury went on for years, but I graduated then in 2019. I was at the stage where I couldn't go full time myself. Right. Because I wasn't able to. So I kind of was then going interviewing for jobs and was thinking I'm just giving up on it because it was the physical element of it. And it was in the very, very, very early stages of the business that, it's not like I could start taking loads of people on and I kind of went for interviews and stuff. And then I just thought, no, you know what? I'm going to go after it. You know, it worked for a good few years building it up. So I had to start hiring people. So that was a weird time because I was part-time driving around in, uh, <laughs> I had a Toyota Yaris, but that got crushed in the accident oh, with all man. the equipment. So I had to get then a Peugeot 206. So I was driving the Peugeot around with a ladder in it. And then I bought a little- <laughs> Was the ladder just like hanging out the back? No, like it was, on the it roof. Was a I could only get a foldy ladder. So I folded in and slid. I couldn't have any passengers because it was in like this. Like it was calamity stuff. Like I like say people were looking at me like this. But that's up. the real stuff. Yeah, just proper grass. That's and they the come around stuff. knocking on doors, just out every day. Like my life depended on it. I don't know where I got the I just was out like thinking back now, I was just graft and like so eventually then got enough money to get a little Jeep. So I got like a two-seater Jeep with a bit of space in the back and hired guys, but I was only 
fresh out of college, like young, early 20s, no idea about management, anything like that. So I hired these guys to kind of do the work. So I was pulling up in the Jeep. They'd hop out. I was too young to get van insurance. So I'd have to drive them to the job. They'd hop out, do the job, hop back in, we drive to the next one. No like way. So I did that for a while, yeah. So it was this very clunky, like I'd love to say it just went like this. It didn't, it was a disaster. Um, but all the real ones are, and this is why I love chatting to people like you, because these are real stories. Too often people glamorize it and they tell me the story at the end. That's why I like picking rising stars, like because it's right in the middle. Yeah. Like you're right in the middle of it there. Too often people kind of look back and they'll tell me the initial, oh, I was in college and blah, blah, blah. And then whoosh, this magic, we flash forward yeah. 10 years and you're like, uh, yeah. all right. And that's useless because it's the people listening that are going, oh, I'm on my own now. I wonder mm. how I can get to two. Like yeah. The one to two is huge. That step from one person to two people yeah. is, is the biggest goal you'll ever cross. Mm. So you hired these guys, you were driving them around. How did you make that work financially? I, I actually have absolutely no idea. Like I don't like it was like the profits were just not there. Like even looking back at my accounts, I made next and nothing. Like I was just I was living like a monk. Do you know? I was kind of like I remember I was told to pay yourself a wage every week. Get used to doing that. Yeah. And I was like, how can I pay myself a wage? I could barely pay this dude. Like so, it kind of. I think my first wage I was paying myself was fifty quid a week. So I'd send fifty quid to myself. Like I was just. It's the, the best arts. feeling though. Yeah. It's the best so, feeling so when then, you pay that first few quid. Yeah. So then it was kind of 50, then it was 100, then it was 200. Then it was, it's kind of gone up like that. But I was, um, it was tough going, but I kind of just built up, built up, built up. And then eventually was able to buy the first van, which was 2019. Um, and then kind of got to the stage and we were busy enough that I could take someone on full time in 2020. So it kind of, I always see like the business started in 2020 mm. because before that was, it was just a mess. It was a... It was well, a without mess. the mess, you don't get the business. Yeah, yeah. That's the bit that people don't talk about and the people, that's why I love doing these really long form podcasts because that's the bit people don't talk about and that's why more people don't start businesses yeah. because they look at you and go, I sure Luke's got like a load of people working for him. Mm. He's got vans and as if it just appeared from heaven. Whereas it's, it's the messy stuff yeah. is the real stuff. When I started uh, doing property management, I was dry. What was it? I'm, I'm struggling to remember now. It was a really small van. I bought a commercial van and my keys were in a, a biscuit box. <laughs> yeah. I have no problem saying that. They were in a biscuit box. Uh, I got one set of keys and they're in my pocket. Then I got two sets of keys they're in my pocket. Then I got three, four, five. And then the pocket was like that. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'll get a biscuit box. And I had that biscuit <laughs> box and it was the most crushed, crumpled thing. And then I was like, Jesus, I better actually get a proper system here. Yeah. <laughs> but without that, you don't go from that to that. And I yeah. think that's the bit people miss is that like they see you and they forget the zero to one. Mm. Zero to one is like two miles wide. And then one ten is like half a meter wide. Yeah. It's that that initial bit like. Yeah. And there's so many times where like thinking back the amount of conversations I had with like me dad and so far, I was just like, I, just, I may as well just pack it in. Do you know, that was for kind of two years I was just I couldn't see how I was going to get out of it do you know what I mean but my injury with hiring like I was in my 20s I was hiring guys in their 50s to do the work I had no idea how to train they weren't doing the right job you know I just it was just it felt like everyone was kind of just caving in constantly mm. um, and then even when kind of went full time uh, the first guy I hired to kind of trust to go out on his own was a friend of mine Andy <laughs> and, uh, like I had no experience whatsoever and even scheduling work. Like I'd have my little diary and it's just every little thing that you've done, you then have to pass over to someone else. And the company was so young that there was, there was all these struggles, you know, and, and it's, it's, uh, it was very, very, very difficult. Um, and I often think back to when I was doing them interviews for the, like I'd been offered good jobs and stuff and whatever it was, you're just like, no, I'm not going to do it. And I could have been on whatever 40, 50 grand a year in here just doing a nice nine to five or I could be earning literally nothing or losing money doing this and whatever possessed me to choose this. It's mental, I mean? isn't it? Yeah. Like it's a sickness. Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> yeah. it's an absolute sickness. Like I think about this quite a lot because like as you go through your career, like, God, Jesus, someone asked me to tell me, I went for dinner with a friend of mine last week and we kind of know each other, but not really well. And he's like, what's your story anyway? And I was like, oh Christ. <laughs> Trying to go back to tell your life story and then did this job, then did this job, then did this business, then that didn't work out, then did this business. I was like, I've lost track myself yeah. of where the journey has begun and ended because <laughs> it's all just like melded into this. Yeah. Like, but like you end up where you want to end up. Yeah. Whereas if you just kind of veer off into the comfort zone, 
I, I could never do it. Yeah, I yeah. I could never so do it. That was that was kind of it. Like it was, yeah. That would have been nice and comfortable, and I'm sure I would have done grand. But it was just the other. I just chose three years of hell instead. But Why? Why did you choose it? I suppose since I was that height, I knew I wanted to do my own thing. It was always this kind of burning desire inside me, you know, to just do. I always thought I could do more and wanted to, you know, wanted Where does that come from? I don't know. I think my dad would be a big influence on me. He was an entrepreneur, grew up on a farm. So I was well used to hard work. Mm. Um, and I suppose I knew I had a really good work ethic. I knew I could outwork anybody else. You knew else. what work looked like. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew, say like, this all the time. You have to see it to be it. Yeah. I think if you can see it, you can be it. I think in Ireland, that's why I do this podcast as well, is that we don't see it enough. Mm we see kind of the end product or we see them in the paper and it's all very snooty and all very kind of unrealistic. But I think if people can see you and go, ah, I went to school with mm. Luke, I know Luke. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Then, you know, we always put people on pedestals. Yeah. We always go, oh my God, look. Yeah. Look, Luke's got this big business now. And oh, okay. And they shrug the shoulders and walk away. Whereas like more people need to kind of hear your story and hear yeah. other people's stories to go, I could have a crack at that. It's all doable, hundred percent. Yeah, and if you're not lucky enough to have a dad or a mum or a sister or a brother, I think the internet now is the place where you can turn and go, okay, yeah, yeah, I can see how that could happen. Like, it's interesting though. Like the the family connection is just nine times out of ten, there's someone there. Yeah, be it a brother, or sister, or father, mother, whoever has been an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, um, and I suppose that was kind of what I grew up around. And like my dad would have worked multiple jobs. Uh, when I was kind of growing up and did loads, he he ran the farm. He had a storage, like a self storage company. He also did a paper round in the morning. Oh, yeah. He used to like we used to breed um, cattle and sheep. Like so, that he'd be lambing at three in the morning, and then he'd have his paper round at five in the morning. Jesus! And then he'd do his paper round. Then he'd come back. He'd drop us to school. He'd come back. He'd work on the farm all day. He'd pick us up from school. He'd go back to the storage business. He'd drop us to football training. I don't know how. That's proper graft. Yeah, he's That's a graft. He still is. Graft. Like, I'd be up in the office. The office is up on the farm, like, and or it's like a kind of part of cabin thing. And I would be working at, say, nine o'clock at night. And I'm thinking, like, what am I doing here? And next thing I hear the tractor going, boy, <laughs> he's in his 60s. And he's been out since six in the morning. He's looking like, at you going, half day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or if I'm on a Sunday, I might be up and it, like I think I'm fucking great on a Sunday getting oh, a bit of work yeah. done, and the quad flies by, and I'm like that fucker again out working like so. But that's the real thing, and the internet as well is kind of like bastardized that in terms of like this hustle bro culture. No, that's been hijacked. Like yeah. the, the proper grafters, like your dad, like they're not boasting about it. And he like, would never, uh, like he doesn't talk that, exactly that. It's not you don't have to get you don't have to get up and do ten videos about how you grind it all day. Just you just get up and do it, you know. And they're the kind of ones that. They're the real grafters is you just get up and just, you just do it. It's just part of you that, you know, you have to get up, you know. The, mm. Were you ever tempted to go into farming? Uh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, growing up on the farm, every summer was spent working there. And, um, you know, it was, when I was growing up, I was going to be a farmer. You know, every Christmas I got a farm set. You know, that was what you do. You go out, you're in the tractor with me dad all day. Yeah. You're drawn in silage. Like that's, um, that's what you do. But he's. Like we're Dublin farmers, you know, I don't sound like a farmer, but we are. So we're different that it's not, you know, we're the bottom of my road is Jobstown and Talla. Like, so yeah. we're two minutes up when you're up there, you think you're in Mayo, but you're, you're on Talla Hill. Like, so that's the mad thing about Dublin. Like, yeah. And I think we, we don't appreciate it because obviously we live here. So when you understand it, like, but like, no matter where you are in Dublin, you can kind of just like look up. And you can just see mountains yeah. and fields, but even the M50, I I, ne I never lose the joy of it where you're driving on the M50 and just like farms to your right. Yeah. Like no city in the world has that. Yeah. So that's kind of, it's, it's, it's an unusual, it's weird. It's mad like, mix. Yeah. And I went to school then and beside Bon Og and Clondalk and like, so you have this, like, you know, like I'm. You had a foot in both worlds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and which is great. And then you kind of go to like. Like we be like my dad be like a Dublin mountain man. Like he was born there. I was born there. It's like we're like a dying breed of just grafters, you know. And kind of like my granddad, he would have came from Mayo, bought the farm there. He lived till he was ninety nine, and he was out at ninety eight years of age. He'd be out digging holes, planting mm -hmm. trees, like just just in That's why he lived to that you know? age, though. Yeah, a hundred percent that graft, but yeah. that just that ethic of being busy and yeah. having a purpose. Like just, all these studies yeah. coming out now, having a purpose, one mm. of the biggest indicators of longevity. Yeah. Like what are you doing beyond just day yeah, to day? Like what's sure. your purpose? What do you, what do you. He had his garden, like he had his, 
like his, he, my grand owned the farm and then he had a smaller part of the farm. And then as he got older, it got smaller and smaller. My dad would have kind of taken it over. And eventually then he was like, he could barely walk, but he'd be out at 98 in his little allotment planting. And he'd know that, you know, the onions are due up in a few weeks. I better plant this. Yeah. I better do that. So that was his purpose was to go out. always and, moving forward. Yeah. Like, I, as I've got older, I've kind of, I've kind of realized life is like seasons. Yeah. You kind of have to think you can't be like sprinting 12 months of the year. Like you have to like work like a farmer. Yeah. Essentially, ironically, it was watching Clarkson's farm. And I kind of had this like realization of like more people need to work mm. like farmers and kind of think of in terms of seasons because too many people like bust their balls for like nine months of the year and then they just keel over. Yeah. Whereas you need to be like reaping, harvesting, yeah. sowing. You need to be doing more. Like, yeah, yeah, you can't just be doing the same thing over and over and over because then you just burn out. Yeah. So you need to be a little bit more strategic. So I think the analogy of life and seasons is huge. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of what he, and that, and I fully agree with you there is that that's what kept him going because he was, you know, and then we'd be down and he'd have something. He was like, I better give that to, to like my name when I went down was <laughs> Mark, Stephen, John, Brian, Luke. You know, he wouldn't even know your name because he was that old. Like, but he'd know who you are and he'd give you a big, thing of scallions or something and he'd have it there for you mm. so that was what kept his brain going yeah. and then he eventually just he was 99 like he couldn't he was uh, not good on his feet he kept falling and stuff so he went into a nursing home and within I remember it was within a month or two his mind just went completely Scary. like literally like that and he was he was I'm not not perfect but he was like well within his wits before that but it's mm. like his brain just he didn't have to tend to his garden he didn't have to put the shoe on he then just went in this and within I think it was like one to two months, his brain was just gone. We're not designed like that. No. And I think t I have a real problem with retirement. Yeah. I have a real issue with people when I retire. I'm like, oh, be careful what you wish for yeah. right now. Because like, what are you going to do when you retire? Oh, it'd be great. I love all this free time. To do what? Yeah. It's, Watch yeah. telly? Yeah. Sit in your hole? Like, it's like when people are like, oh, if I won the lotto, I'd do this. So me and my wife always had that debate every time. Like every Wednesday, Saturday, Friday, we do it. And I more do it just for the, the mental... <laughs> thought of it going okay it's six million what would you do and we have the same conversation and then we pair it back to go how can we do this today yeah. and we always bring it back to today and go how can you have a really rich life today because you don't really need the money yeah. you need the thought of what you're going to do today because people think the delayed gratification oh when i'm 65 yeah. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. If Can't they make worse. If you even make it to 65. But, but I've that's... seen it so many times and I've seen people retire and they'll have had really high power jobs and they'll have had really important jobs, super smart. And the decline is visible. You can, they're cranky, they're yeah. off it. They just get stuck in the mud talking yeah. about the same crap all the time, talking about stupid stuff that doesn't become obsessed with current events because there's nothing. Yeah, yeah there's nothing else going oh, on. Oh, have you heard about this thing? I'm like, nope. Yeah. I, I couldn't tell you. I, I don't listen to the radio. Yeah. I don't listen. I Mainstream media, I, I read the papers on a Saturday, Sunday just to keep myself tuned in to what's going on. Yeah. Rest of the week. Yeah, couldn't, I'm the same. Couldn't tell you because yeah. I don't care. I don't care if unless I could do something about it, I'm not mm. about it. I don't care. I move on. To, I have enough stuff going on myself. You have enough stuff trying to find purpose in your own life without getting involved in other stuff yeah. that you have no, no control over. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I fully agree. Like that's why I'm, I don't think I'd ever retire. I definitely slow down. Yeah, but yeah, I do think something I always else. need to have something going evolve. on. Evolve. Yeah, evolve into something. Go back like and buy a farm or do. Exactly. Something, you know, you'd have, you'd have to do something, a little bar or like, I think I'd, you know, if I was to down the way, you've made your millions and then you'd, you'd have to stay in the game somehow, 100%. you know, even me dad is kind of like, he's still like out grafting, but he's compared to what he used to do. He's not doing like, he's getting away on his motorbike and he's doing, he's in kind of semi-retirement, even though if someone was to look at him, like this fella's working the whole time, but it's what I knew of him growing up. He's much, much slower than he was. And he's enjoying more and he's he's able to come out like he'd, he'd be asking us to go for something to eat and more of that stuff. Do you know what I mean? But you so can that's do kind of more of that now. Yeah. I think you don't have to sacrifice yeah. to the end now. I yeah. think if you're if you're deliberate and you live life with intention, mm. you don't just stumble through. Too many people stumble through and live life dictated by others. Yeah. Oh, I go on holidays these two weeks of the year. Oh, I do this. I do. You're like, do you have to though? Mm. Or are you just doing what everyone else does? Because yeah. that's what everyone else does. And you don't want to like break from the norm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So that's, that's me dad and me kind of background. So that was kind of where a lot of my work ethic came from then, you know. And kind Is of, that what kept you going for those two years where you're, where you're really just 
barely but, keeping the lights on. Yeah, I think so. I think it's just kind of uh, back to your kind of original questions. Why I suppose it was just that I knew it was that was what I was going to do, and I wasn't going to give up. You know, I, I kind of like as I say, we're just I feel I'm probably built a little bit different, and that I'll just keep going. You know, and even like I was thinking back, we uh, I planted a thousand. Remember, I was telling you about the Christmas trees, yeah. and it just came back to me was that. I had a broken hand, so I had a, my hand was broken, I had a cast on. You're hard on the body, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. So How would you break the hand? It, uh, it was a skiing accident. So my, <laughs> my hand In the Dublin Mountains. Like this, no, in France. <laughs> my hand broke up like this and it was, it was bollocks like, and I had a cast on and I went up and for whatever reason thought I was going to plant a thousand. So I planted a thousand Christmas on the farm. trees. Yeah, with a broken hand. So I was kind of shoveling and obviously by the end of it I had made it so much worse I went back to Tala Hospital and they were like it hasn't healed at all Weird. I was like that's <laughs> odd <laughs> so I had to get it re-broken mm. and I have a plate and wires and stuff in there now so it's kind of just that oh, oh I'm injured but I keep going type of thing which is stupid as well but that's just the mindset I suppose but that's kind of each channel that you get older though you yeah kinda... yeah so that's kind of what I, I kind of kept pushing forward and decided I was going to keep going at the cleaning company and then kind of 2020 was the first full-time year. And I suppose from there, it's done its thing. You know, it was it was this fucking right down and it just came up and it's just kind of went like that since then. You know, it's been- What's the secret sauce? Um, What happened in 2020? I suppose that's when I first tweaked the subscription thing. Um, before that, I wasn't. I always knew- the way the industry work didn't make sense. Like, why do you have to ring this person every time if they're just going to get the windows cleaned anyway? Like, it was just it was so clunky. Um, and that's when I started to formulate the idea and I kind of thought there has to be a way of just doing like a subscription service for this. Like, like why do I have to ring Gary to tell him to see if he wants it done? I know he wants it done. It's my pet peeve. Yeah, like he Drives doesn't even want, you don't want to be talking there. You don't want to be talking to me. You don't want to have to meet me there. You're busy. You don't want to have to have cash for me. You just want the windows to be clean and that's it. And I just want to arrive and clean the windows, you know? And of course, you've great crack with the customers when they're there and stuff. But ultimately, our target market is busy professionals who just don't have the time. Um, and that's where I kind of started to, the people who I was doing the work for were all a similar person, you know, house proud, had their own home, liked to keep things tidy and whatever. So, it was kind of coming into then 2021 is when I I went over to the UK to Pryor's window clean and Lee Pryor. So he has, it's kind of, I think it's England's biggest residential um, window cleaning company and seeing how he did things. So they have a subscription over there. Um, how did you get in touch with him or how did you go over? What I went crack? to a cleaning expo in, um, it's outside Birmingham. Uh, I forget the name of the place. The it's yeah, yeah, yeah. NEC's crazy. Yeah, yeah, huge. I go uh, over there for conferences and stuff. It's mental. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to understand the scale of it. It's like six, 18 football pitches Yeah, or there's a bike show there as well. Oh, smart. But this clean expo now was like <laughs> one little corner. Like it's, right. it was really, it was external clean, really specific. Sounds like a great crack, yeah. Oh, it was deadly. Um, big, big buzz, yeah. But he did a talk there. <laughs> I, you I love when you're like serious. I'm like, no, look, yeah, sounds great fucking crack, bored as hell. <laughs> <laughs> for me it was great I was like a child going around oh like, look at that squeegee yeah come back with <laughs> bags full of stuff like. uh, but he did a talk and the talk was book it and squeegee to one million pounds a year and remember I was there and I was literally like like the love heart I was like, yeah. I was like this is what I'm talking <laughs> oh, about that's the dreamy business model yeah, yeah so I went up and I tried to talk to him but he was swamped with people and I was younger then I wasn't really as you know I was like oh, I'll leave I won't talk to him but then it just stayed with me so I remember I rang his office to speak to him no. a few months later and he wouldn't speak to me and I was I rang and rang and rang and rang and emailed and emailed and emailed I love it eventually and when you ring out of hours it goes to I figured out that it goes to like a, a call answering service and they wouldn't really know so I kind of was like oh yeah yeah I know Lee uh, he's expecting me yeah yeah <laughs> getting to ring me back so one day Lee rang me he's like you're right mate and I was like yeah and just kind of told him what it was I and love that yeah it was deadly like love uh, that That they're the stories right that's the bit it takes yeah those little things it's like anytime I hear these I'm like yes they're, they're the little one percents yeah you'll go a little bit further you won't just go oh well yeah. Can't get to Ruta Lee. Yeah, because I knew it was, I needed to see it, you know. And yeah. he had, at one stage he was doing consultations, but he had stopped 
um, before I even heard this talk, like he'd stop doing it because he's probably just busy. I don't he's know. Paying the hole as well. Like, yeah. consultations are paying the hole. Yeah, that's what he was saying, and he said that he wasn't doing it anymore. And I was like, "Look, I'm coming from Ireland, you know." And um, I'm already here. Yeah, <laughs> look out the window, Lee. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so he didn't agree straight away, and he was busy, and it probably took me another four or five months before he'd agreed, and Very I flew nice. over, and. He let me sit with him for the whole day and ask yes. him anything. And because I wasn't the competitor and I couldn't really be, he's in London, he kind of just told me everything. Love um, that. Like the guy in college, it was kind of, it was just, he was showing me his accounts. I seen everything. Um, Love that. I'd say his head was wrecked. I was asking him just every question. And then at the end of the day, I think we were supposed to finish at two and it was half five. And he was like, look, mate, I'm going to have to wrap it up. Like, and I was like, I just, uh. so then the <laughs> next day I was flying out to Lee. So I was like, could I go out with one of your lads oh, in one of the vans? And he was like, yeah, work away. Uh, I went out with one of his dudes who was out window cleaning and just seeing how he wow. operated. And that was just a game changer. So I could basically package what he was doing and started it in Ireland. Um, and that's kind of where it really just took off was the subscription based thing. And it just works. Um, it just works. It's. I think you're going to get a shed load of business out of this. Yeah. I should have hit you up for an affiliate code. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you service? Greater Dublin area at the minute. So Dublin, within an hour of our yard, which is Talla Hill. So that will get us to Drogheda. Uh, so kind of South Loud, all of Dublin, Mead, Kildare, um, parts of Leash, like Port Leash, Port Darlington, uh, Carlow Town, Wicklow. So that's our an hour a bit. An hour. Okay. Yeah. Um Mullingar as well is an hour and four minutes, <laughs> as the lads have told me. That's not an hour away because they have to drive out. Like so it's an hour over our yard. So that's where we are at the minute. We're doing that's for residential. For commercial, we'd go on like we'd be in Galway, uh Waterford, uh we've been in Kilkenny, we've been all over for commercial because you'll be paid for the travel and stuff like a a three bed semi detached is going to pay you to drive down, like whereas as much as they love your service, yeah, they're not going to pay you. You're doing stuff with the government; they you you are paid for. It. Like so, um, we're kind of nationwide that way. But we've started now a nationwide rollout for residential. So we're going into Cork, Galway, Waterford, and Limerick. Wow. Um, so we're t- kind of dealing with partners there to start with before we would send the van down. Excuse me. Um, so we're kind of going to build up a bit of a customer base and just, just trial it out. Mm. I think it will 100% work. I can't see how it wouldn't. Um, the only thing is I'm worried about is I know Dublin, I know the areas, I know, you know, we do big leaflet drops and I know the areas not to do them and in the city centre, there's no point because yeah. like, it's too much of hard work. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Um, so we worked exclusively in the city and it was a nightmare. Yeah. It's tough. It's really tough. Even just getting around. So we used to, similar to yourself, we'd kind of have a, a we'd drop a pin. So our office used to be Temple Bar and we'd have a circle mm. and we'd go within that circle. And it was different for us because we were trying to go on foot. Um, but it was a nightmare. Like, yeah. Just between traffic and logistics. Yeah, it's getting worse getting as well. And getting in and out. And it was just, essentially, we were running a small hotel. But the rooms are all over the all yeah. over the city. So like it's so many things. You're better off just to have a good niche and stick to it. Yeah. You're better like the suburbs are so big. Like, yeah, it's I mean, huge. It's, okay, even you're in and out it. there. Yes, the three bits MED is the three bits MED. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. But you do fifteen of them in the same housing estate is the equivalent yeah. to what you're gonna get for this big snazzy job in town, you know, yeah. and no none of the headache. <laughs> but you have to figure that out, right? You have to yeah. do the experiment. You have to kind of go, Ooh, big contract in town, you go. I actually reckon we lost money by the time you factor in yeah. time. When you break travel, it down, yeah. The lads got clamped. Whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, it's all those stuff. <laughs> yeah. But like what you said there about expanding, that makes sense because you've got the model now. You've got the playbook. Okay, you can tweak it for different areas. Mm. Like, But like cities are cities more or less. Like yeah. you'll figure out the logistics if you get a local head to kind of go, do there, don't do there, do there, don't yeah, do there. Like that's you know the areas in Dublin going, ah, they're going to have the financial income to do it. Yeah, like. that's where the guy from Cork come up, um, the kind of one the partners are going to be using. Um, and obviously be very, very careful about who you use. Yeah. And, you know, we'd, we'd like the staff we have are unbelievable lads out on the road. Like they're really good. Like I don't even want to call them window cleaners because they're not, they're kind of proper operatives, you know, they're out and they're just like, our two most recent hires was Carl. He was a manager in Aldi. Um, and then we've Steve and he's a fully qualified carpenter's work. Wow. So these are good guys. Like, um, How do you get these people? Cause that is the one thing I hear from people all the time, especially now can't get good people. Yeah. Big problem for me as well at the start. Um, couldn't get anyone. 
couldn't even get bad people. Um, couldn't get <laughs> couldn't get anyone. Um, so it got to the stage where I like I was taking on guys, and I was like, "This guy's an absolute disaster," and he wouldn't even stay. So like it was just <laughs> I'm bad. He's worse. Yeah. <laughs> so I suppose it's a lot of trial and error, and just spotting what things won't work. You know, like like for instance, if CBs, I don't really do the hiring anymore. I've kind of my managers do that, but they're now trained up on if a CB comes in and, and they've worked in a warehouse for 10 years, don't hire them because they're going to be now getting into a van. They're used to working in a warehouse and real low pick rate and maybe arson Habits. around. And I know this is yeah. stereotyping, but generally that's the story. Now they're in a the van, they're the main person, they're dealing. It's really on the go. You're out. You know, it's 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 not easy. Like you're, You have to have the owner's mindset. Yeah. I was talking about this on a different podcast yesterday. The owner... You, the guy asked me, oh, what's the number one thing you'd look for in a sales professional? And I was like, the owner's mindset. Mm. Because treat it like your own business. Yeah. Yeah. Like they have their van. The lads have their van. It's their, like their little office, you know, they'll have it sparkling. It's only actually did a video on this yesterday of one of the lads' vans was there and it was immaculate. And it was like cleaner than ever I would have my own van. And I opened the back and you'd eat your dinner off the ground, like real pride. like and. But how you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah, yeah. If you have a cleaning company and you have a shit environment. Yeah. Well, that means you'll cut corners somewhere. Yeah. You'll eventually start dropping the ball. It's like when I go into a nice bar or restaurant. You're there and you're like, oh, it's nice. And you order and you go into the Jacks and it's a kip. Mm. And you're like, I reckon the kitchen's the same. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's you know, pulling, pulling up to a customer's house, if they're looking at the window and the dashboard is full of oh, crisps and oh, wrappers. It's, it's, and It's the worst. You ever see delivery drivers coming up and they have like dockets and it's like oh. halfway up the glass. like and It's, it's just, rotten. It like. looks horrible. Um, so that's a big thing for lads. Every day they clean their van. Um, and that's a non-negotiable. It's just done. And it's just better for everyone. It's better for us. It's better for them. It's better for the customer because it's just... Start as you mean to go on. Standards. Everything's, you know, hold yeah. the standard. If yes. you're not holding the standard for yourself, yeah. decline. The yeah. decline is inevitable because if you'll accept that. You yeah, if you leave it go for two weeks and then it's stuff will be grown in the back of the van. So like that's the kind of start. And then um, they're the, I suppose, the type of guys we get, you know, and because it's, as you said, the owner's mindset, like they're given their list of work. And whatever order they want to do it in, they do it in. It's, okay. They do their own schedule. Right. Whereas before we were doing their schedule and it was real rigid and, you know, they might be, they might live in Clondalkin and we'd have them starting down here and they're probably thinking, I'd rather start here mm. or I'd rather start and finish close to home. Or, yeah. So I'd that's then, a great, that's an insight there. That's yeah. great. Uh, giving the power to the person working yeah, with themselves. Because he's going to do it whatever way he thinks is best. And if he makes a balls of it, he makes balls of it, you know. What it's but not, it's a choice. Yeah, I, yeah. I was listening to someone recently, and they were like, they were talking. It was an e-commerce business, and they were like, "Oh, it's really hard." And they were talking about how they solved their shipping problems, and they solved their shipping problems by giving the person who was buying an option. Okay. Do you want it by Royal Mail or do you want it by DHL? And their complaints halved. Yeah. Because you chose. Yeah, yeah. You'd said, "Oh, you know, an expectation setting, isn't it? Oh, it'll be there between." two and three days and if it arrives on the fifth day you're going mental yeah. you know if you pick 10 to 14 days and arrives after seven you're delighted yeah it's that those little tiny yeah. details that's so a really interesting it's just the little tweaks along the way like that was one we did i remember when i when we first did that i was terrified i was like how are they going to be able to do it but it was only because we were doing 10 schedules every day it was such a headache for the office micromanaging as yeah, well like trying to do everybody's schedule and get everything perfect but when you actually hand that over you're splitting the work in 10 different ways to each guy. So he's only getting one sheet and yeah. it's his own one. And he's thinking, right, I'll start there. I'll get me lunch. I'll head over here. You know, someone And he knows his early. route. Yeah. He knows that road is a nightmare. Between yeah. Nine and 10 because there's a school there. Oh, that's good because I can do that and that. Like, they're yeah. the lit, but they're the details. Yeah. So they? then it just gives the responsibility to them, which they love. And even they might be on, they'll finish their work and they'll see, or they might have a job left and they'll see, you know, Gary's over here. I'm over here. Why don't I just take his job and he take mine? Do you know what I mean? So there's all that sort of okay, stuff going yeah, on. Yeah. And that's just left to them. And if they don't finish the work, they don't finish the work. You know, it's that's just the way it is. It's um, you know, if they don't get it done in the day, I mean, it's it'll carry over to the next day. Like so it's it's um that was a big kind of change, and that just gives them that like it's their van, it's their schedule, it's their, you know, it's well, it's our van, but they're obviously the designated driver. So it's kind of given them you're still not breathing down their neck every day. You know, you're... You're empowering them. Yeah, I think if you're that's, confident to do it, then you fire away. If they that's part of the end, answer of how you find good people, right? Yeah. It sounds like there you're empowering good people. Yeah. You hire good people, you empower them. Yeah, and you kind of just leave them alone. And like we get guys in from building sites who are used to bending the head roared off them by a foreman over, 
you know, his own deadlines and whatever else. You know what I mean? So this is kind of, and it just, we just have complete trust in them. Like just, I was in a job yesterday, a student accommodation we're doing massive, massive building. It's like, it's nine stories high um, and it's huge. And there's two guys there and I met them on site. They told me what they were planning on doing. Whereas beforehand I'd be arriving, right, this is what we're doing. Yeah. This, that, this, that has to be done this way. Now I'm like, right, what are we doing? And they know better than I do yeah. at this stage. So they're yeah. like, well, we're thinking we'll get the cherry picker in here, start here, this, I'll chat to your one. You know, whereas before, yeah. they'd be standing there waiting for me to go and chat to the manager. And then, you know, so now it's just, yeah. they're looking after it. So it's Slows like- Slows like, everything down. Yeah, yeah, they're like little mini project managers and they're, and they're great. And the team we have are unbelievable, like unbelievable. Like they're just, the lads are great. Like every time, like we get a massive amount of kind of reviews on Google and the main thing that always pops up, like I have a yoke that generates like a, you know, keywords and in, in thing. And the main thing is always team friendly. You know, that's the, they're the things that people realize. They're kind of how good the guys are. When they ring the office, one of the girls would be, that's just the kind of whole point of the businesses. We're just a friendly, normal, you know, it's family run. To, you know, my sister, Eve is the office manager. Sam's my brother-in-law. He's the sales guy. Like it's, we're on my dad's farm and that's the kind of culture that all the lads come in and yeah. it's, you know, and it's real, real cringy to say we're a big family, but that's kind of, well, it, uh, it's that kind of, it's actually real. I, it makes my skin crawl when big tech companies talk about that. I'm like, yeah. Oh, give me a at their pizza parties. <laughs> oh, pizza and beers, man. That's my. You've listened to the pod. You know that's my <laughs> hobby horse. Pizza and beers, and you're like, that's not a family, man. You're just psychologically manipulating people to make yeah. them feel beholden to you. Whereas, like, that's a secret sauce right there. Like, I think you've kind of answered that about how you how you hire good people is. Yeah you have a good environment yeah <laughs> like, for sure if you have a shit environment of course you're not going to hurt good people because they, they know better like, yeah and it's just one bad apple on top of a load of other bad apples like and it's it's kind of it's the if the environment is toxic everybody else becomes toxic you know and it's just it's a horrible place like so you know you'll get guys in or i keep saying guys it's just because most of our, our guys in the road are are men but obviously we've women too but like you get someone in who doesn't fit that and doesn't like all of the, all of our staff on the road to the type of people that get up early, get out. They want to be starting early. They want to be finishing early. Mm -hmm. They want to power through all the work. Yeah. Most of them don't stop. They just keep going and, and that's grand and they finish early and they'd rather do that. Yeah. And that's the kind of mindset you need for that job because you're out on the road, you're, it's go, go, go. You get some people in and they go on a kind of, you know, go slower and they're giving out about the traffic and about all the other things everyone else has going on. They'll let you know no. every problem. But the guys that we have are so good that they'll they'll weed them out. You know, they'll even be saying to me, "Listen, your man, he's not gonna last. Like he's yeah. oh. giving out about X, Y, Z." The, some people have a problem for everything, and the solution to nothing. Yeah, and they're the people I try to avoid like the plague. I'm like, oh, this, oh, and I, I always find it funny when I'm walking along in Dublin. Like I was only, I was behind these two people this morning, and they were just moaning. Yeah. Like, oh, maybe you're the problem, John. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the problem is you. Yeah. It's not the company. It's not the business. Yeah. Not the customers. Maybe it's you. Like if you look for a problem, you will find one. Of course. You know, or if you look for something wrong with your job, you'll have a list a kilometer long. Anyone would. It's just, if you're all day you're focused on that, that's all that's going to keep coming up for you, you know? And then you look back to the CV and you'll see that they've had these other jobs and, it, you know, what's happened at each of these jobs that they eventually... It's the victim mentality. Yeah, well. I hate this it. This happened I can't to me. This happened it. to me. Yeah. Are, you, are you someone that makes things happen or does things happen to you? Yeah. And you can always like within a few minutes, I'm like, now nah, we're not going to, we're not going to get you yeah, out of here. Yeah. You're just not my kind of, and now I'm kind of like old enough and mature enough to go, nah. Yeah. I think it's, we'll that, just, it's that we'll victim. Just, we'll just leave just, you over there. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just phase you out. <laughs> I was in the gym last week and I had to laugh. The two girls were going in and out and one of them was just finished the class and one of them was starting. And she was like, how was it? And you want to, it was just a one liner, but it just it stuck with me since she goes, sure. It's as hard as you make it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and really. I loved it. Really, I was like, "That's just one of those one-liner wisdoms you can apply to everything." Yeah, it's as hard as you make it. Yeah. Like the classes are bloody hard. Yeah, but it's as hard as you you go full steam ahead, and you blow up after thirty minutes, or you go powering through and you steadily increase. Yeah. And like I just thought that I was like, "That's one of those yeah. things." I'm just going to keep that in my mind now. It's as hard as you make it, Gary. There's one like that as well. John Jocko Willing. Did you ever hear yeah, his name? Good. I love. He just says good anytime Martin wrong, yeah. Martin goes wrong. Puncture, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Oh, yeah. his extreme ownership book is one of the best books yeah. I've read. Because yeah. 
I can kind of give you the summary. It's extreme ownership. Everything that happens is up to you. Yeah. And I think that's, a, I read that and I was like, yeah, I've listened to it twice. It's I have brilliant. the Audible. It's brilliant. I, I, that was one of the one books, read it during COVID and then bought the Audible and listened to it. Yeah. So like, I kind of want this just to sink in. Yeah. Because it's just one of those messages. You kind of go, everything is down to you. Yeah. For good and for bad. Even shit that happens to you that you have no control over. Mm. Absolutely zero. Because they're the things that can derail you. It's the stuff you never think that'll happen happens. You're like, oh no. Yeah. And you kind of get stuck in that kind of like, oh shit. But if you go, right, okay, this is a chance to become a better project manager or become mm. a better people manager, like you with the back. That's a perfect example. Yeah. Most people would have went, ah, not for me. Yeah. I'll go into a desk job and would have crippled themselves sitting down for the yeah. next 40 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> been absolutely miserable. And it's Waiting for their it two a, weeks in Tenerife. It was around then um, that I was listening to that book because it was uh, Joe Doyle told me to listen to that. Well, he tells everyone to listen to it, but <laughs> I, he told me to listen to it and listen to it. And there was one, there was one quote in it that he says, and it's something like, if your staff are acting up or they're not doing what you want, it's 100% completely your fault. 100%. And yeah. I remember that, that clicked with me because I was like, why isn't this dude working as hard as I? Like, you know, all, it was all, why isn't he doing this? Why isn't yeah. he doing this? And ultimately I was like, well, it probably is my fucking fault because I have absolutely no idea how to manage this guy. Yeah, exactly. So that kind of, and he said, if you can't get down, what he, he says something like, you need to get down into the weeds with them. So you need to get down into the weeds with this staff member figure out what's going on how can we fix it you know really get in there with them try sort it out from, and then you know there comes a point then where you've been in the weeds with them for two months and they're not getting any better they're probably not going to get better that's you know? different right so it's yeah so it's knowing when to you know not everything is you know ultimately you have to say right this is just not working out you know but it's kind of to give it a chance you have to get down there and get into it you know uh, so many problems i see in businesses are just poor communication mm. expectations not set clarity not been given and then poor communication yeah like if if you just look backwards like like you said there if you go backwards and look down and go okay they're not doing the job properly but were they showing yeah were they showing what good looks like yeah like what's good better best what's the best case scenario what's good scenario you know yeah. what those three st they, have they been shown what excellent looks like yeah too, more often they've just been like welcome gary all right here you go off you go and you're like yeah, and then you're giving out to them because they, yeah. they haven't. Yeah, like that was a that was a big <laughs> staple of my management at the start was me getting frustrated over stuff that hadn't Everyone shown knows. anyone. Yeah. You just assume everyone's going to be like you. Yeah, and they're not, and they don't know how to do it. And so that was a big learning curve. And I remember it was my sister, Eva, um, who's the office manager, and she's younger than me. And when we first hired a second admin, <laughs> the first thing Eva said to her, Eva knew her, she was like, I hope... Uh, I hope you're really good at reading Luke's mind. And um, that's kind of one of the main oh, parts no. of the role. And I was like, you're like, oh God. Yeah, right. because I'm obviously going in and I'd be like, where's the, uh, and my head would be so fried. I can't even remember what I was asking, this sort of stuff. Yeah. Like, so that was, it took me a long time to figure out that, yeah, you have to set, this is what you're doing. This is how you do it. This is what I'm expecting it. And I'm expecting it by Friday. Yeah. You know, if it's not done by Friday, let me know beforehand why, you know, this sort of stuff is, that took me a long time to, uh, to figure out, still figuring out, you know. Um, Someone showed me something last week and it's brilliant. And I've started to write one and it's a Gary user manual. It's so a what? It's a Gary user manual. All right. Yeah. So a Luke user manual. So he has this user manual for him. And he goes, he gives it to people that work with him going, this is how you work with me. Right. And it sounds weird, right? Yeah. But it's like, he's like, oh, I prefer email to calls. I prefer this. I use this project management tool. These are the hours I work. Sometimes I do this. This is how the communication style I prefer. This is it. Yeah. And it's like. Good idea. Yeah. Oh, I saw it. And I was like, no, very rarely do you kind of go, no one's shown me one of these before. Yeah. And it was a user manual. I was like, that's brilliant. I yeah. literally sat down on Monday and went, okay, I'm going to write a user manual for the lads to work with me to go, okay, this, this is the communication style I like. This is the expectations yeah. I have. This is what I want. I was like, even for me to kind of think and go, how do I like to work? Yeah. It kind of said it was a really good self. Yeah. Even, if you, even if you don't have staff, even if you just do it for yourself to go, how do you like to work? Mm. It was one of those brilliant ones. Yeah. Uh, in fairness, it was Angus. I'll shout him out. Angus, who works with Ali Abdal, he showed me that. I was like, that's brilliant. I'm reading uh, Michael O'Leary's book at the minute, or it's uh, Matt Cooper's book on oh, Michael yeah. O'Leary. And his, uh, he has something like that in when he was hiring a new... Um, executive assistant yeah, i think yeah. and he had the the job description is hilarious like he's like needs to be able to work ridiculously long hours like just this big long thing of what it's like to work with him. expectations yeah yeah and he was being 100 completely yeah. honest like obviously everyone knows who he is now yeah but 
back then you mightn't have known. Yeah. You're like, oh, I thought this would be a candy nine to five with yeah. a nice, nice calm, caring boss. <laughs> yeah. But if you get it, if that's what you're looking for, happy days. But that's, and I remember reading that and I was like, that's brilliant. And the only person going for that is someone who knows exactly what to get themselves in for. Mm. Like, you know? I, I was trying to find people to help work with me in the pod. And um, I was putting up ads. I was melting my head. I was like, you've got a, a big audience here. Yeah. Why the hell are you not advertising to them? <laughs> so I wrote it. I was like, hey, I'm hiring, blah, blah, blah. And I got tons of applications. And the majority of them were brilliant. Yeah. Because they already knew the vibe. They knew the style. They knew what I wanted. Yeah. I just went from here to here. Because yeah. they knew. They knew Huge what it was as like. as well on social media. Because like, we've only really started on social media in the last year, maybe started this year. And that's another question you ask is how are we finding staff? Social media is unbelievable mm -hmm. for it because like that, they know they've seen everything already. They're not just reading the no job surprises. description on Indeed. Yeah. They're looking at us doing the work, what we do. So now we get loads of people. We're knocked down with people. Brilliant. Yeah. Requesting like, you know, uh, have any work, blah, blah, blah. So that's our last, I think our last four hires have been through social media. Um, Instagram amazing. reach. Yeah. It's brilliant. Nadia from Ashford Motors, who's on before you. She said the majority of her business is sold through Instagram. Mm. That's mind blowing. Yeah. Like her platform sells cars that are worth 100, 150, 200 grand on Insta. Yeah. Like that's mental. Yeah. Like even just to say that out loud, whereas like a lot of people see social as like this fluffy thing. Oh, yeah. We must do more social. What the hell does that mean? Yeah. They forget that there's like, you can draw a straight line between social and impact if you're smart about it, if you think, What's the outcome here? Mm. Like, do we want staff? Do we want customers? Do we want, you know, how you put, and it's the one bugbear I have is that Irish entrepreneurs are not great at telling their story. Mm. They're uh, like, I will have people on. I'll be like, where do we tag you? I don't have any yeah. social media. You're like, where's the Yanks would have it? Anywhere? From, yeah. Like nothing? Like even on LinkedIn, you're like, no, <laughs> trust me, man. No headshot even. You're like, oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> like these are successful people and you're kind of going, yeah, I get it. Back in the day, you didn't really need it or whatever, or you've built a good business that isn't. But people think that, that gives an excuse. Oh, I don't need social media. Yeah. Like, at some stage, you might. I think it's just the positives from it far away, the negatives. Like, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't want to be. It's what's it called? It's, social currency. Like, you're, oh, you're social just, proof as well. Like, yeah, just you know, getting out there. People fear show. it. It is. Mm. It can be a toxic place. There's no two ways about it. Like, it can mm. be a bad place. But like you said, the positives far yeah. away the negatives like. yeah like it's 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 huge i like, can even we get stuff through like big big companies that we're doing work for and you'll be meeting with you know their main facilities manager who'd look after loads of properties and they'll be like seeing it when your tiktok's there today and i'm like that's yeah. gas like, isn't it though yeah this guy be like 55 or something and he's like yeah seeing the senior out and whatever and like you're yeah. chatting it's it's mad yeah. oh, so it's he huge. knows you and it's like he knows you personally before we've even met him and he's still inviting you out, which means he likes what he sees. And, you know, it's it's nearly like a deal done. Uh, he wants you there, do you know? So it's um, That's exactly huge it. for us. I mean, the, never he knows what that. he's getting. Yeah. He knows, okay, Luke seems like a sound lad. Oh, they do. They do offices. Oh, class. Yeah. I never knew they did offices. Whereas most cleaning companies would be like, social media. Yeah. Well, fuck would be on that. Yeah. Because, you know, think, when things are grand, people don't really push themselves. Mm. But things won't always be grand. Like everything is going to shift to the way you're moving. Mm. things will be online only subscription like it's i lose hours per month you know ringing plumbers ringing this ringing that yeah you're like if i could just go online oh can you come to daddy i can just book it and it's a subscription <laughs> click click done yeah not like calling leave a voicemail calls back start oh geez sorry yeah i meant to go back to you there i'll get you a quote over and you're like yeah, and it I never don't comes. Want to like, I yeah. want you just to tell me roughly how much it'll be. 200 quid, two grand, whatever. Mm. Just tell me. And then we'll go no go. Mm. Like the, the way you're moving. We're, and I think people don't realize the next generation of people are just entirely digitally savvy. Mm. They have been born with a phone. They've been born with an iPad. They don't want to be like ringing 10 places. Mm. They want to go online, clean the company. They don't want to be ringing anyone. People don't want, like people don't even answer the phone anymore. Like when I first, even when I first started, You'd ring someone, they'd answer. Like they'd answer their mobile. Now, I would say less than fifty percent of people will actually answer the phone. They just, they just don't want it. They want to just go to voicemail, and see who the hell is ringing. Like, but, but, but what you're doing is so smart. You're leveraging into it. Mm. You're leaning into it, like yeah. with the subscription. Okay, I only have to do it once. Maybe I don't even have to do it at all. Mm. Unreal. Like what you're doing in this space, I'm so bullish on the whole trade space and the whole digitization of the trades. Mm. 
it's going to be huge. Yeah, and you're massive. far ahead of the game. Yeah, it's it is it's 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 why I'm still aggressively pushing the whole thing because there's so much more room and space for what we're doing now, but also a whole other like I could list ten other industries that are where window cleaning was before we kind of came in, mm. and I would just you know you could wrap them all up it's it's um that's it's, where i would see this going with you when yeah, i look at this massive, i can like, see you nailing this and then going, okay we're going to do this for plumbing yeah carpentry anything that's regular in your home yeah because when you look at your house like we bought an older house some of the new some was old real higgledy piggledy jobby constantly getting people out to do stuff yeah and if i could just like subscribe going okay once a year i want you to come through like even the boiler guy you're ringing them every year. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus, right. Oh, sure, I'll have to get out to you. So yeah. you know, that, that'd be <laughs> yeah. lovely. Yeah. <laughs> she wouldn't mind. Coming from Atlone or something. <laughs> or, or, or like you ring up and what, what's the problem? It's like, if I fucking knew the problem, I wouldn't be ringing you. Yeah. yeah. You know, or they come out and they go, oh, Jesus. Oh, why was it done like that? I'm like, I didn't build it, mate. Yeah. I didn't build a house myself. I just want to figure out what's wrong. Yeah. And that's, that's just it. And people are getting less and less handy. Mm. Um, like, I'd say maybe when you know, dad was growing up, everyone knew how to use a ladder. Everyone probably cleaned their own gutters. Mm. You know, even some of the older gents that we do work for would usually be up on the ladder doing the gutters. And like, um, you know, Brody won't let me up the ladder anymore. Like, um, she did right too. Like. Yeah, of course. Like, Jesus, like uh, 80 something rolled up at, at, at 20 foot in the air. Like, but um, them guys aren't there. I don't think people own ladders anymore. Like it's, it's kind of, it's all moving away from that. Like even my dad didn't understand why people didn't clean their own windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to explain to him and he didn't want, I tried to add him to the subscription. He was like, no, I clean my own windows. And he was doing this for years. And then I just added him and said nothing, right? And this is a year ago. And <laughs> he just lets it happen. Says nothing. And uh, uh, he hasn't cleaned pride, his own windows. Like, yeah. The pride is like, so he's like, I don't get it. And then he's like, oh, and he, the gutters are full. Brilliant. And uh, I said, because we're in the country, so there's big, trees all around we've the same yeah oh, so I'm like every six months the gutters yeah. need to be done so he was out and cleaning and uh, i was like that i'll just i'll just get that booked in for you like, no, I, i'll tell me i own gutter again booked it in we go we do it and right. he just and he and you know he loves it like but um the unspoken like you, yeah, yeah you both handy, you both like, save face yeah so he's as clean windows clean gutters all year round doesn't have to do it himself he can go and focus on others was that that kind of mentality, but whereas new people are like, I just want someone else to sort it for me. Do you know, I'm like that. Like first thing I did when I moved into my place was book a subscription with the cleaner company. I got a, you know, I got someone in a, a cleaner inside. We don't do that, but got a cleaner inside, got all these things that I don't want to do, do you know? So I just want to get stuff kind of handled because I'm so busy. I don't want to be even thinking about. But I say this to people all the time, especially earlier stage entrepreneurs. What, an, what's an hour of your time worth? Mm. Oh, I don't know. Well, you should. Can should know, yeah, because you're probably doing all this stupid stuff, and they're flat to the mat. They're under such pressure that they can't, um, they can't, they can't, um, like they can't grow their business because mm. they're under such mad pressure because they're working twenty four hours a day, but they're doing stupid stuff. Yeah, driving around the country to collect a part, and you're like four round trip, just collect something twenty for quid, twenty quid, like, yeah. Oh, but even just the recurring stuff of like, let's say your time, your time should be worth like two fifty an hour, say. Mm. 250 or an hour. Anything less than that, outsource it. Yeah, get someone else to do but it. But people yeah. think it's funny and there's an Irish thing too of like, oh, sure, I could just do it myself. You could. Yeah. If that's what you're into. Or you could just hire someone to do it for you and then spend your time doing 250 or yeah. an hour jobs. That's like Dan Martell, very good um, US entrepreneur. His whole thing is buy back your time. Mm. That's his whole shtick. But it's brilliant. Yeah. Like it is a very valid point. Like you do not have time to be doing these other things. Yeah. Like laundry and grocery collection and all that. All the stuff is there now. Mm. It's just don't have like an ego or pride thing about like, or thinking you're too big for your boots. Yeah. People are like, oh, why would you do that shirt? And you're like. Because I don't, like, the last thing I want to be doing after coming back after working six days a week is then having to do. Clean your own windows. Yeah. <laughs> clean my own windows, do all the laundry, do all the everything. Like I just, I couldn't imagine anything worse, you know. So it's just, that's all sorted for me. And I can go in Shut and I can say lovely, you know. You're properly relaxed. Yeah. Like, uh, as you get older, you realize on a Saturday you're like, Christ. Just being an adult takes a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> just being a grown up takes a lot of time. Yeah. You're just like, I'm just trying to do that now. I'm trying to outsource as much as possible. Yeah. So you're just going, I don't want to have to think about it every time. Mm. I want to have like, think about it once, do it well once, and then have the system set up. I'm trying to systemize everything yeah. in my life so that like, I don't have to think about this. Yeah. Oh, where did I get that part? Oh, I better go 
Yeah, I'm huge on systems as well. Oh, everything. Like, everything. Yeah, it's big. Like it's this sort of thinking is big. Like in the states, and it's big for what? Like in the states, as in in America, like like say they'd have their pool guy. The pool mm. guy come once a week. The gardeners come every two weeks. The windows are done. Everything's just automated, and that's how it works. Um, for some reason in Ireland, it's just not like that. Um, it's the thing we talked about. It's because it's such a pain in the arse. Yeah, getting someone good and finding them. And then getting them on, and then getting them again. Yeah, it's they don't have your standard of thinking. They don't yeah. have the subscription model. It's clunky. It's that mm. thing of like why it's not done is that it's not easy. Mm. It's 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 hard to find good people. Like mm. even like if you're trying to find a cleaner or something, you have to get recommendations mm. and anyone good. Now she's brilliant, but you won't get her. Yeah, because they're so good, they don't move, and people yeah. keep them. So like I think that's why. But I think like that's why I think when. When Owen, you told me about this, I was like, oh, that is just a genius idea. <laughs> because it's simple, it's straightforward, but it's not easy. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Simple, but not easy. They're the businesses that you're going to go and I get it, I understand it, going to be big. Yeah. Where does this go, Luke? Um, it goes big. You know, I kind of, I'm really, really, uh, I kind of want to become, like, what's happened with us in kind of Dublin is, we've kind of completely taken over that kind of residential space. You know, like when I was first starting, as I said, it was kind of two, three vans was massive residential window cleaning company. We're up to 13 now in a couple of years. Like, so we're, we're, we're huge in Dublin. Um, and it's kind of now expanding that nationwide to become huge nationwide. You don't want to be kind of, I wanted to get to the stage where someone thinks of window cleaning, they think of cleaning company already like that instantly you know and i think in a lot of places in dublin it's it is kind of like that. i know obviously a lot of people haven't heard of us but we're in pretty much every estate in in dublin at this stage you know at least one house because we've like we're hitting on nearly three thousand uh subscription customers in dublin like so that's kind of and we've another maybe seven thousand who just get once off or the other stuff so um that's where i see it kind of in ireland and then it's the uk it's it's you know it's i, I don't see why if we can't get a proper and reading that Michael O'Leary book at the minute, he kind of seen that and like an ecosystem, like Ryanair, he didn't see it as just, he was flying people back and forth. He seen it as like an ecosystem for traveling, for booking cars, uh, for hotels. Everything was in the one place, all of his kind of big data and mm. it's all done through that. I would see that as where we're kind of heading. Um, I would think we would be, the plan is to be worldwide in, in the cleaning space. It's then going into every other home service there is, you know? So I'm, where I'm at at the minute is I'm still building, like at the minute, it's all these kind of things you keep hitting that you're like, right, as you said there a minute ago, you're doing all this stupid stuff throughout the day. So like Sam is my main sales guy. Half his day is spent on things that shouldn't need to be done by a human being. It should just be someone clicks, books in, everything auto-populates, automatically schedules. Like it should be that once you click on the website, you know, a week later, a van arrives yeah. and there shouldn't be any human interaction. At the minute it's coming in and it, we're still miles ahead of anyone else, but from what we want to do, it's not like, and it's not where it should be. It should be just completely automated, you know, mm. and everything is scheduled right down to that guy who calls out on that van was chosen by the system because he lives five minutes away. Like this sort of, yeah. that's the level I want to get to. Um, that's brilliant. Mike. So we're building our own system. Um, to do that because the system we use now is it's limited and we've run out of jobs on it and it's you know we're, we're kind of coming to we're just bursting at the seams and a lot of things and we've kind of this is our main system but we've 30 other satellites because we've grown so quickly i've bolted on stuff all over yeah, the place that's and the issue isn't it it's like, just this big but that software like that. system will probably like that could be the big thing right we could be sitting here in five years and you're like that software, I never knew you'd get 300 million for that. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I see this all the time. Like you're yeah. like, oh, it's started off doing this, but you're solving a pain problem. So you're solving a pain problem for the residential customer. Now you're solving a pain problem for yourself. You just keep solving problems. Yeah. Like that's what the entrepreneur experiment is all about. Like yeah. you just keep experimenting, keep solving problems. Yeah. And this isn't a problem we had a year ago. And it's, you know, if, if, and there was people telling me, why don't you just build a system or you do your own system? And a year ago, it was like, why would I do that? We it wouldn't make sense. Though, service, yeah. yeah. Whereas now we've got to the stage where we actually have no choice but to kind of go on to that stage, you know? So that's kind of where we're at at the minute. Um, and like, for instance, I was, I was getting something couriered into town a couple of weeks ago. I was in doing a quote for the department of justice and took their keys home and got a call saying, 
you've taken the keys to the roof. I was like, oh, geez. So I had to get- That's how uh, you get on a list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cloned on the way home. Like, so I was like, geez. So I was like, I'll drop them in. And they were like, no, we need them now. Like, so I was like, right, I get a career. So yeah. The armed response unit will be yeah. shortly. <laughs> so I went on to click a courier. Uh, I don't know if you've ever used it. This no. website. It's I've seen them. Amazing. So you go on, you don't need to talk to anyone. You don't need to ring. I'd never got an, anything courier in my life. Clicked the size of the item I was, it was a set of keys, uh, where it was, what sort of thing would carry a, a motorbike. Like you're just clicking through this thing, you pay, half an hour later, um, a bike arrives, you give them the keys and that's it. And I just thought that is amazing, you know. And that's what it should be. Yeah, for everything, you the, know. The words that turn my blood cold, can we hop on a quick call about this? Mm. I'm like, oh, for fuck's Why? Sake. <laughs> you want a 30 minute call about something that could be a text. Yeah. Just, just tell me what you want. Yeah. We'll do it or we won't do it. Yeah. Simple. So that's kind of, yeah, exactly. That's the way I'm going. And even for customers now, if they want to change something, they'll have to ring us. They'll have to email us. I just want them to be able to go in and change it themselves, yeah. you know? So it is, there's all this kind of next stage that we're going to, and it's kind of building systems. And I want to get to the stage where I can literally just copy what we're doing now and paste it into any industry. Mm. Um, and I think that's really possible because the only thing that's different is when one of my lads arrives at the property, he's getting out and doing something else rather than cleaning windows. Do you know, everything else beforehand is the exact same. Mm. The way the customer books in, the way they pay, the way we interact with them, the way they're set up, the way they're scheduled, everything is the exact same, except when he gets out, he's picking up something else rather than a squeegee. You know, that's that's kind of where I want to get to because it's all very similar, you know. And I think this is one of the biggest areas of low-hanging fruit in yeah. the world like people are always like oh ai and that. I'm like, fuck no yeah. if someone comes to me and they're like this is this problem i'm gonna solve them like yeah yeah that's such a huge hairy problem it is a problem loads yeah. of hair on it loads of problems but people forget that like so on a sa sunday i'll sit down and i'll map out my week and a lot of stuff will be stuff that you know oh, i'll call the plumber like even today i was walking around town trying to find a battery for an alarm what a waste of time. Yeah. Do you know, <laughs> yeah. but stuff like that, and it'll be on Sunday where I'm like, okay. And, and, but if I could just have gone online, like I called a plumber this morning and it was actually surprisingly easy, but like, you know, I had to go, oh, what do you want with this? Okay. Well, hold on now. I'll put you through, and, you know, yeah. 20 minutes there and you're like, okay, grand Monday. Whereas like, if I could have just went down and went, I would have paid probably a premium yeah. to be able to go on plumbers.ie on a Sunday and go, here's my error code. Here's the problem. Yeah. Here's the time I'd like. Yeah, there there's shouldn't some, need to be, and there's going to be, I think what people are terrified of is, oh, what if they arrive and it's this problem, so this, like all that stuff can be, like we get, like we've standardized pricing. Mm -hmm. So a three bed semi is this price. And people are like, well, mine is a little bit bigger now than a standard three bed and it might be one extra window. Yeah. The time it would take for us to go look at this house, do up an extra price. It might be an extra two euro or something. Like do you just, have a quote. You're yeah, like, that's oh, our Jesus, price just there. I don't if want a quote. I want it done. Yeah, like that's the price. It's like, you know, if yours is a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, that's the price, you know, and it's just, it just works for everyone rather than us having to say, well, you send me over pictures and I'll quote it up that way. And it's but just. But you know what a lot of it is? It's cash. Yeah. The cash. The lads are afraid to come out of the cash. Yeah. Because like, Jeremy, you ring someone up and you're like, oh, I have this problem. Oh, and like cash job. Yeah. Bill was season. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's what it is though. Like yeah. a lot of that is like the, the lads are earning so much cash that yeah. they don't want to systemize it. But like they're going to go the way of the dinosaur. Yeah. Because people eventually just get sick to the teeth of just having this yeah. ball. Like, like I'd pay an extra 20, 30% if I didn't have to have that effort of like yeah. comes out, quote, yeah. suck to teeth. The, yeah. oh, <laughs> mm, well, that's a bit different now. I'm like, the best trade guy we ever had, he was a dad of a friend of mine, Neil. And like, Neil is just a legend. Neil will come in, we tell him roughly what the problem was. He go, keys, hand him the keys. <laughs> Neil will come back, or Neil will come back maybe that evening, tomorrow. Keys. Yeah. <laughs> Don't break, yeah. wouldn't break my balls. That's what you're like, Oh, to. that's a three quarter inch pipe now, Gary, and all. Yeah. Legend. Yeah. But that's what great business is about. Yeah. Right. We need to get into a quick fire round because I've <laughs> chatted to you so much. <laughs> we've gone way over time. Right. Let's get into a quick fire round. All right. What book would you recommend every entrepreneur should read? I know you said one, but I have four. Even better. Um, Even better. One of them, funny enough, was Extreme Ownership. Excellent. Um, because of just responsibility. Second one is Seller Be Sold by Grant Cardone. Um, I know he's not everyone's favorite but it gets into the whole sales and why oh, it's so important 
Third one is the 12 week year for strategy. I've seen this, but I haven't read it. It's, it's good. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I use it every 12 weeks. It sounds <laughs> like my kind of thing. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, and the fourth one is uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. So just mm. general, you know, I think it's important for younger, maybe entrepreneurs to listen to that one and just understanding that you don't want to buy a Lamborghini with your cash. You want to buy a property that will generate income that you can eventually get your Lamborghini. You know, that it's just that whole thinking of just, you know, don't be an idiot, basically. So that's kind of... Don't be uh, stupid. Summary, we just summed it up. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> don't be a moron. Yeah. What's something you'd learn the hard way? That I can't do everything myself. Delegation. Um, I struggled big time. I thought, I'll do that. I'll do that. No, look, you're not doing that right. I'll take it on, take it on, take it on, take it on. And then nothing was getting done. Um, so delegation was was huge it's still something I'm battling with is being able to delegate um, but I'm getting a lot better so yeah hopefully you're listening to the pod and you're feeling inspired maybe you want to do new things in your own business or maybe you have that brilliant idea you've always wanted to bring a little bit further and see if it works so why not right now you listen to the majority of the guests in this show and they've been helped by the local enterprise office at some stage in the journey they have something for everybody whether you have that idea you want to develop, you want to get your products to new markets, you want to innovate your existing products, or you want to expand staff and premises, they have the supports to help. So why not today? If you want to start up or grow your business, then contact your local enterprise office today. What have you sacrificed to achieve your success? Everything in parts, you know, every part of your life, you sacrifice some bit of it. Um, I suppose my health was a big one. That I sacrificed through my injury. I, looking back, shouldn't have been working and doing what I was doing. Um, I worked, it was kind of six years of, I wasn't training, I wasn't doing anything. I couldn't really, you know, and it's only in the last year I've gone back training, I've gone back doing that stuff. But my health was a big one. I was getting sick every month and I was getting the flu every month. It wasn't the flu, I was just, Burnt had out. the shit knocked down me every month. Like, so, you know, health, holidays, you know, time of friends, time of family, you, you sacrifice a part of everything, you know, um, but I'm getting a lot of that back now, which is great. What would you do today if I give you 10 million euro? I was hoping I actually wouldn't ask you this one because uh, I'm going to sound like a knob. <laughs> Perfect. This is my favorite question. Yeah. I would invest it into myself, into the cleaning company. I was trying to think, it took me about 10 minutes when you sent me that. I was, I was looking, I was like, you know, where would I get the best returns? And I just, I genuinely think, it would go into the cleaning company that is, is where it would. Uh, it does sound like an app. A lot, a lot of entrepreneurs should say that answer. Yeah, I know. I, just, I, I was trying to think, and I was thinking, what about this or this? I was like, you know what? I, I'd love 10 million quid. <laughs> the honest I'd answer. That's what I'm looking for. Like, Because yeah. I'm looking for people to kind of give me a, their honest answer. Yeah. Like, so like, if it's yourself, it's yourself. Like, yeah. There's no right or wrong answer. Yeah. Um, what's something in your daily routine you wish it started sooner? Journaling. Um, so journaling every morning. What and does that look like for you? So that looks like, First couple of paragraphs is how I'm feeling that morning, that and it's on my mind, that and you know, from the previous day, just getting it out, getting from here out so that I'm, it's not playing on me all day. Mm -hmm. That'll be the first part. Second part then is something we spoke about is gratitude. You know, I'm I'm grateful for my cup of coffee in the morning, grateful for my dog Albert, I'm grateful for, you know, all the things that you're grateful for, grateful for the weather, grateful for all this sort of stuff, you know, right down to a granular level. Um, and that's been a game changer for me because I've been so busy all the time that you just don't, you're not grateful for anything that's happened to you. are just plowing on, plowing on, plowing on. So that's huge. And then it's into goals. So goals going forward, written as though they've already happened. You know, that's a big one. I'm so happy and grateful that, you know, we've hit our targets for the end of the year. I'm so happy and grateful that I've a thousand houses under me belt. You know, all this sort of stuff is it's it's uh, really powerful. Um so that's it's immensely new, powerful. Yeah. And it gets um, hijacked as well by the kind of people online who are trying to sell you crystals. Yeah. Um, <laughs> manifestation, visualization. There is an it's unbelievable power to that. But it gets hijacked. Um it's very, very powerful. Yeah. I've brought it right down to like I'm starting to use it now in going into a meeting you know like if I'm going like like last week I went into a meeting with a huge hotel I was going to meet them and I just sat in the car and closed my eyes for 30 seconds and just imagined how the meeting would go and you know I was going to 
you know, it'd be blah, blah, blah. And, and that's, I could see how it was going to go. And that's just naturally how it kind of flows down. It rewires your brain. Yeah. Honestly, it rewires your yeah. brain. Like coming in today, I was super happy about these two podcasts I was going to do because I would visualize how they were going to go. I kind of a fair idea of the two people I was going to chat to. And I knew how it was going to go mm. because again, journaling is, is something I've done for a long time. It's definitely helped me through a lot of tough times in yeah. terms of when I wasn't doing it, I was trying to catch up with myself. I was mm. sprinting ahead and it just led to like tough emotional times, mental times. When you get it out every day, it's mad. Yeah, it's, it's huge. like the power of it is crazy. And it sounds weird to go, oh yeah, the power of just writing something down a page. But if you do that day after day for a month or two, yeah, it and literally rewire how your brain works. Yeah, and the pen just keeps going and you kind of just keep going. And when you really, like on a Sunday, you'll do a proper bit of journal where you're not busy if nothing else going on and you'll sit and just write. And if you write for long enough, you'll just keep writing and stuff will just pour out and you'll be like, oh, geez, remember that? Yeah, and stuff even from your childhood would be coming up and you'd be like, yeah, and you just make these little links and you will always, always, always feel better after, you know? So, yeah. It's, it's like a workout, right? Yeah. Never have a bad one. Yeah, yeah. You never sure. have a bad one. You might struggle, but anytime I finish a workout, God, yeah. you know, it's a fine works. And people think, oh, journaling is a bit self-indulgent and people kind of scoff at it, but it's... the the clear writing is a clear mind. Mm. That's how I think of it. Yeah. If I can write clearly, I have a clear mind. Yeah. Like the other day, I had a day where just everything was scrambled. I sat down, wrote everything out. Yeah, the it's next amazing. Day was, I was, I'd say 30 times more effective the next day. Mm. And that sounds mad, but it is 100% true. So thank you for talking about that. Yeah. I'm going to give you 1 million euro. You can invest in one person or company. It is not Luke. Who is it? <laughs> yeah. Get you on that one. No, I wasn't going to do it for this one. Um, I do want to give Anya a shout out on this from the Smoo company because she gave me a shout out and she is amazing. But I don't want to say it again that, that I invest in her, but she's brilliant. Um, there's one thing that I'm looking at a lot is property um, and kind of unusual properties and ones with kind of high yields. And there is a friend of mine, Aaron O'Flaherty, who runs the brokerage, who is a very good guy at putting deals together, um, property deals and he is the type of guy who will take cash and make something of it and you'll get your cash back plus a high yield and stuff. It's all property based. Like, but if I think if I gave him a million quid, you would be getting it back plus, plus tenfold, you know? So it'd be Aaron O'Flaherty. That's quite the shout out. I think Aaron can clip that and use that as his next ad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. We can often explain other people's businesses better than our own. Yeah. You know, it's funny, like I can always go, oh, Luke was on, he does this, this, and this, and this. And they go, what's your podcast about? Well, yeah. <laughs> it's external I chat to founders. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, you can always have clarity about other people. Yeah. Um, if you start a new company in the morning, what would it be? Uh, I thought about this one. Um, and one thing that would be radically different, because I could say, oh, we would have went into, you know, uh, plumbing, uh, subscription with plumbing or whatever, but it's all very similar. But something I'd always would have liked to do is something that I can do from anywhere. So like I'm very much grounded in Ireland, you know, and I will be here because my company's here. I would have loved to do something. I love marketing, like really love marketing. It's a real passion of mine. I would love to do like a marketing agency or something like that, that you can do from like you're going away to Spain. I'd love to be able to, you could go, do it from there. You know, I can't, I can work from anywhere, but everything is here, you know, mm -hmm. and there's, with something like a marketing agency, there's a lot less stuff going on. There's a lot less, you don't need 13 vans on the road, you know. Yeah, but every 21 year old bro now has a marketing yeah. agency. God, I was <laughs> That's the only problem. I was yeah. at an event recently and they're all marketing agencies. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Something, something that I could do from anywhere, I suppose, is what I'm. Uh, yeah. What I'm that's the dream. That's, that's why I love content. I love media because you literally can do it from anywhere. Yeah. That's kind of my long term goal is to kind of like have a hybrid life. Yeah. That's kind of my goal is to be here some of the time and away some of the time. Yeah. It's just what I want to do. And I'm starting to kind of do that now by having these mini kind of mini trips. Yeah. Um, what do you believe other people would find strange or strongly disagree with? So, I believe that the human kind of normal, you know, or what's taken as the status quo or the normal way of kind of living is so far below where it should be. And what I mean by that is that it's, it's seen as normal to finish your work at four or five o'clock and just watch telly or TikTok all evening then. And then the weekend you go for points and you're hungover on a Sunday and that's a rinse and repeat. I just think that that's, 
to do that is so unnormal, you know, to the human body and to the human mind and everything it should be doing. So I just think there's like a kind of social standard of normal that isn't, you know, and it's everybody is capable of so much more. And I don't even mean in business because not everybody can be a great business person. I just mean in life in general, you know, be more active, go out and do stuff, you know, it's just not go for a swim, go for a walk, bring whoever out, you know, stuff like that. It's just, to me, that's living, you know, the whole, even though I'm big on social media, I'm never really on my phone on social media. I hate it. Um, I hate being a consumer of it, you know, and, and constantly on it. So I just feel like everybody is capable of doing much more and having a much better life than they settle for, you know. Like that was invented in the industrial era mm. when people had to make widgets in a factory. Yeah. That was it. like, and we still do it that way. Yeah. It's mental. Yeah. And There's everyone's nothing time. that's sadder than I think, oh, the nine to five, punching the clock. You're like, that doesn't work. Yeah. We like, finally people have woken up after COVID though. I think entrepreneurs knew this a long time ago. I think other people have now kind of gone, it doesn't really make sense to sit in the car for two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening, does it? Mm. Why? Because that's how it's always been done. Mm. The worst words in the English language. We've always done it that way. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be. Yeah. Right. What's the best thing you've bought for a hundred euro or spent money on? So there was a, uh... I went to Vietnam. I love traveling, like, and I do a lot of traveling. And I went to Vietnam, and this always just stuck with me because it was the best customer service I'd ever got from anything, ever. Like, and I was just I was mesmerized by it. I did a, a food tour in Hanoi in Vietnam, and it was just me. No one else arrived for the food tour, and it was this guy who arrived to give the tour, and it was $40 or something. And I was thinking of this, and it's a weird one to say, but... It was like five hours long and it was just, this guy was amazing. Went through everything, brought me everywhere, brought me into his home at one stage to meet. I was chatting to his mom. It was just the maddest experience ever. And it was brilliant. And he was so, like, he just loved his job. Loved it. And he, he'd be looking at me when I'm eating it to see my reaction to the food. And Fast. at one stage I got so full, I was like, I don't think I'm going to eat anymore. And he's like, oh, no problem, we'll take a break. So we went out for 45 minutes and sat down. And then he was like, you know, good he to go. He winded again. you for 45 yeah. minutes. <laughs> Yeah. But I'm good to go again. Yeah, so I thought was... you were going to say shot a cow with a bazooka. No. You said Vietnam, and I went on a weird tour. Is like oh. no, the food tour, but that always stayed because he was just brilliant, just the utmost customer service, and it was his own thing. Like he was only Class. a young guy, so he was just really, you know, it's like you'd read somewhere that you just need to, you know, and it was just he wasn't over the top around, and it was just brilliant. And I always say, and even afterwards, I still have him on Instagram. This is years ago, like, and uh, he texts you all the time. Hey, were you getting oh, on? Oh, he's brilliant. I love people with passion. When I meet people with passion about anything, I'm like, I'm hooked. Yeah. Even if I'm not really into it, I'm like, I'm into it then. Cause yeah, like, yeah, because they're into just, it. Just like, because the passion yeah. is so rare. What's your final piece of advice for every entrepreneur or aspiring entrepreneur listening? So one thing that I always believe very strongly and something that I always, I, I see a lot of younger entrepreneurs, not even younger, maybe more, they're only starting now. It's just the problems that you'll face. And there's something, and I have a tattoo down my back and home, and it's a quote that my dad always said is nothing is as bad as it seems, you know? So nothing is as bad as it seems. It never is. Even though in your head and what you think is the ultimate fire that you will never get over, it isn't as bad as it seems, you know, and everything works out all of the time, you know? So that's something that I, believe strongly even now when just everything has fallen apart i'm just like you know what it's not as bad as it seems you know it's only window cleaning <laughs> it's not a it's not the end of the world you know it's kind of that kind of mentality has got me through a lot that i'm just you know it's it's maybe bad for a week bad for a month maybe it's six months you're in the trenches you come out the other side you know so that's huge for me i love that this too shall pass yeah like it's a neighbor of ours wrote that on his wall during COVID. yeah and I walked past it every day and it brought me joy every single day. Yeah. So it's like, my friend Aidan has past. that tattooed on him. <laughs> but it's true though. Yeah. Like it's, it's the, having that perspective mm. though. It's about being able to ha zoom out and have that perspective. Mm. Luke, that was absolutely savage crack. Brilliant. Yeah. Where can people learn more about the cleaning company, first of all, and then yourself? Yeah. So we're the cleaning company.ie is our website, as the name suggests. Um, we're on Instagram, the cleaning company.ie, uh, TikTok, same again. Um, we're, quite active on those. Uh, we're planning to get a lot more active. So you can catch us on all socials where we're up there. Brilliant. And we already talked about the areas you cover. Luke, yeah. that was savage. Thank you so Deadly. much. Deadly. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Harry.